hello everyone in the today session we going to talk about the dependency injection so dependency injection is a design patterns which implement the ioc so ioc is a programming style where we are changing the normal flow of the program just take the example of two classes class a and the class b so class a need the class b object to perform its job in this case class b is a dependency for class a so now class a having the three option like one option is here class a should create class b object directly second option we having the class a should fetch the class b object so these two option are straight forward where class a has to do something but in the di it will not create the class b object it will receive it whenever it is available so this third style is coming under the ioc where the normal flow of the program we have inverted we have changed so objective of the dependency injection is to make the loosely coupled software components so what are the benefit you will get here so overall benefit of the dependency injection is it is helping us to make the code loosely coupled the real life example of the di implementation is think about a case today you are using one payment gateway and you have built your entire invoice system on that payment gateway so tomorrow of course you might need to change the payment gateway from paytm to paypal or let's say razor pay and the google pay so these are the vendor these are the dependency we having on our project so our payment service should be designed in such a way these future changes we able to manage without changing our code much so guys if you are coming to the channel first time i request to everyone please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that the information about such valuable video you will get automatically So let's get started with the implementation of dependency injection in ASP.NET Web API. So what I'm doing here, I'm just creating here a Web API project. So let's create a project here. At this time, creating here a blank solution because a one project I will add for Dell layer. So let's define the first of all location. So it's perfect. I'm, de I'm, I'm defining my project name. Let's say a Web API DI. This is my project name. So in this solution, I'm just adding here a first project for my Dell layer. So the new project I'm adding here for Dell layer with the help of class library. Let's say Dell layer project I'm adding. And this Dell layer I'm just quickly generating with the help of Entity Framework. So let me generate the code quickly with the help of Entity Framework. So add a new item. And there is option here data. I'm just using here a root net entity data model. Define your model name. Let's say database context. I'm using a database context. Now I just use code first from database because we are uh, willing to use the code first approach. Now just make a connection with your database. I'm making the connection here by passing the SQL Server detail. So let me copy my SQL Server details from my Local SQL Server. So this is my local SQL Server's detail. I'm just passing here, and I'm using here SQL Server authentication. Then pass the username and password. Test the connection. It's successful. And now I just select the existing database. I'm already having a database here. Let's say the Web API code. I'm using here this database. Now click on the OK button. And now let's save the connection. Now let's save the username and the password in the connection string. The next, then you will find here the API. So there is a product table I'm having here. Then finish. So we create an entity for my product table and the database. Now for the product table we can create here a repository because we are not willing to write the query logic in our web API itself. the query logic should be separated so what i'm doing here i'm just going to follow here the repository design pattern so i'm just adding here a folder for the repository and in the repository folder i'm adding here an interface so i'm adding here a new item and the new item just using here interface i'm using here interface i product repository i product repository in i product repository we will define the methods for performing the crude operation on the product entity so what i'm doing here i'm just adding here a method 
for returning the list of product here so i'm just using here i number label and now here just return the list of product it's this way define the class here for product i'm just defining the class here at the name is space so it would be here get products and now here for understanding a concept just adding here two methods one for fetching the product detail and one for adding the product here so i'm just using let's say void and here use add product in add product i'm just receiving here the product model let's product model and now here just create a class for implementing these two methods so the class name would also be the product repository let's make it public so that we can access in the layer which we will add the reference of the dell now here just implement the interface i product repository i'm implementing it here and here we are using the entity framework so in the entity framework we need to use the database context class object db and then use it constructor and db equal to new database context new database context now let's write the code for adding your products it will be a db dot products then add now pass the model here now db dot save changes so we are just saving the changes here now for returning the list of product just use it db dot products then to list let it return the list of product so we have written the code successfully for the product repository now for accessing this dell layer in the web api project now let's add a web api here i'm adding here a web api project so web and it's a ace.net web application just use here web api it's web api code i'm adding here i'm just using here mt and web api and now let's add the reference of dell layer so add the reference of dell layer i'm adding here and, and and in the dell layer we are using entity framework so make sure we have installed the entity framework package in this web api also because dell is a class library so what are the configuration we have defined in app.config now it will read from this web api so just browse here for the entity framework i'm using here entity framework so just download the entity framework 6.2 this is the latest version and make sure what that connection string we are having in the app.config same connection string we need to define in our web.config as well so i'm just going to copy the connection string from dell layer app.config and putting in the web api project web.config now add a controller here i'm adding a controller for product ap i'm adding here a web api to controller empty template i'm selecting here okay first of all let's build the code here so that everything is fine let's build it now let's make the web api as a startup project now here add a controller i'm adding a controller so controller name would be here product let's a product api controller now let's add here a constructor and now here to perform the crude operation however we are need to create this i product repository interface instance same i'm doing here i product repository interface reference i'm creating here so it's a repo i'm just creating here it's a product repo product repo as a instance name i'm creating here but it's an interface so what we need to do here we need to pass the implemented class object here so what i can do here i can pass the implemented class object through this constructor like this way now we can define a method in this product controller api so now let's return the list of product here i numerable product and get products i'm just willing to return the list of product here so just use here return product repo then call the method here get products 
at the namespace del layer so this way we are just returning here the list of product let's make it public so that we can access it from outside so the logic for querying the product entity we have not written now here the logic is completely abstracted in this class but if you will see this code is not loosely coupled this code is tightly coupled because when you are willing to write the mid test cases for this product controller so you need to create this class object and if you will see in this class we directly passing the implementation of this product repository class here there is no way to change the implementation for this i product repository so it's not the loosely coupled system let's say tightly coupled system so if you are willing to make it loosely coupled so we can make it with the help of ioc container so for implementing the di i uh, we need to install here the ioc container for web api so there are a ioc container for web api i'm just going to install with the help of new get packages so just search a package name as unity dot web api then you will find the package here unity dot web api this is the latest version here so guys if you are willing to uh, use the unity for mvc so that is unity dot mvc package for a web api there is unity dot web api package so this is the package i'm just going to install here for my web api so let's install it so it's automatically added here in app underscore start unity config file and the unity config file we need to just register here the container service let me copy this one and what we are willing to register here so if you will see in the product controller we are just using here i product repository and product repository these two things we need to mention so interface so whenever you will access this interface instance it will provide automatically this product repository class object now so in place of receiving this in place of assigning this hard code value uh, what we can do here i'm just we can use a constructor injection in the constructor injection i can receive the value for a product repo so it would be here product repo equal to underscore product repo so this way with the help of constructor injection we can receive the value and make sure this unity config method we are calling in the global dot asx file so there is a readme dot txt file as well which is helping you how we can call it so this is the method we need to call in our global dot asx file so here we need to call this method if you will not call this method so that the registration of the unity container will not be done here so now let's see how the web api returning the list of product to us run the code so whenever now you will request the product in the database so with the help of unity container the instance of the i product repository would be provided and it will fetch the data from the database with the help of product repository now let's use a postman for fetching the list of product it would be here api so let me copy the url first of all and the url is here this one now here it is a api slash product then click on the send button and you can see i'm getting here the list of product here in available in the database so perfectly it is working so this is the the constructor injection we have done here apart from the unity container you can use other di container also with the web api like you, like you can use ninjet you can use castle bin store as well so it's up to you what container you are willing to use for implementing the dependency injection in web api so this is the constructor injection way and the constructor injection is the widely used way for handling the dependency let's say constructor injection so this is all about the dependency injection implementation in web api